Well, good morning, guys. I'm going to apologize in advance. I'm going to tell you right now, my internet here is absolutely abysmal. I don't know what the deal is. I have been on the phone with our internet company today trying to get things organized, and goodness only knows how this is going to come across. So if you are getting a bunch of blockiness, I am so sorry. <laughs> I am trying to get it sorted out. We're not quite sure what happened here this morning. There's just been some weird glitch. I've restarted router, restarted routers, can't even speak now, uh, restarted modems, the whole nine yards. There's been phone calls. It just... One of the blessings, I guess, of living in rural Minnesota. <laughs> okay, so at any rate, obnoxious internet aside, <laughs> we're going to talk about the number one reason why you want to have a series when it comes to rapid releasing. And honestly, when it comes to being able to up your game as an author and your author income. So I've been thinking a lot about like what it, what would be the number one? There are a number of reasons. And I go into them into in today's podcast, this week's podcast episode. So if you want to check that out, be sure to go to authorrevolution.org forward slash 29. I can't believe there's already 29 episodes, guys. That's crazy. But the number one reason I think that it's so important, at least from the author perspective, in my personal opinion, when it comes to rapid releasing, is honestly the fact that you are no longer having to recreate the wheel. Every single time you are able to dive into a new world once, and then rather than having to recreate something, you are only focusing on expansion. So you it, rather than, you know, going through the entire concept of all the magical rules or the um, storyline rules of a different kind of police department, whatever the case might be, whatever your story is about, you go through that really in-depth world building part of it only once. And then every other time, now you're just adding to it. You're, you're expanding that world. You're creating characters that are new, but you're keeping in line with the ones, hopefully, most likely, that you've already spent time creating and developing. And in turn, it's not just you who is benefiting from that kind of um, lack of having to do things over again. Your readers are the same way. They don't have to recreate in their mind who this character is or how that world works or how the magical aspects of it go because everything is in line with what they're already envisioning. So they know they like those characters. They know they like that world. They know that everything uh, works a certain way or at least they think it does until they've been proven otherwise. And so both you and your readers are able to hop straight into it, which makes it an easier sell for them and it makes it an easier write for you, thus the rapid releasing part of it. So when you're trying to get set up with your series or with your next books and you're trying to think how on earth could someone actually write a book a month? How could someone actually write and release a book a month? How could I write and release a book every three months maybe? Now ideally you're going to want to be trying to do it every four weeks if possible and that's something that even myself I have struggled with because I have so many other things that are going on. Writing is not my only gig and I'm sure it's not for you either. So I totally get it. But next year for 2021, it is something that I am going to be pulling up and trying very hard to go ahead and do. So as soon as the Wind Haven Witches are done, that's the series that are going to be rapid releasing one a month starting in September. I'm going to actually start working straight away on my series that's going to be launching in January. And that's going to go all the way back to my Oracle series and my Oracle book and Diana Hawthorne because I have so many different um, readers who have told me that they love her world and they love her character and they like uh, the way it got left and they're wanting to have more information from it. And so when you get that kind of information from your readers, rather than ignoring it, you're going to want to go, hmm, okay, there's something here. Let me try this. Now, had I not had this huge concept ready to be built and that I was actually going to be list aiming with, I probably would have put the Windhaven Witches aside to go straight into Oracle and try to do that. Because when, when you get that information, that feedback from your readers right away, you want to do it as quickly as possible. You don't want to wait on that. You want to jump on it and try to get moving. But at the same time, I knew Windhaven was going to be a bigger deal for me in terms of what I wanted to accomplish for my author goals. So it was a different kind of animal. Now for 2021, I'll be going back in. And I, for those of you who have ever looked at my author page on Amazon, you'll notice that I've pulled Oracle out of the 
Eighth Dimension series because she's going to start having and carrying her own. So she's a solo bird at the moment. She's just hanging out by herself. But it's going to be something that uh, I will be developing and she's going to end up having kind of like a psychic mystery Nancy Drew type series going on and bringing in all sorts of supernatural elements. So it'll be very like Lucifer-esque uh, with some supernatural the TV show built into it. There, there's going to be a lot of like crazy stuff like that. And so it'll be fun to develop her world and start writing in it so that I can release it. One, hopefully, my, my goal right now is to have one a month for 2021. So we'll see what happens. Right now, I'm still knee deep in Windhaven Witches, and I won't be able to put my brain into the outlining process for Oracle just yet, but I am going to be diving into that very soon. Obviously, I have to get these two books done that are left, but my goal is to have both of those done by September. So then come September, I'm all Oracle all the time, other than obviously the releases and the launches, which are going to be pretty important. So for you, I want you to think about that as well. So if you're, if this is the first series that you've ever written, or if this is the first book that you've ever written, and you're trying to think about how are you going to get to the point of having an author income that can take over everything. So you no longer have to go to the day job, which nobody's probably for the most part going to a day job, except for maybe David, who is going to Walmart, which is not fun. Sorry, David, but he, I'm sure he wants to get that, uh, erased as well so that he can go ahead and just do his author stuff all the time, which would be fantastic. Well, your goal then is to be thinking about what kind of series can you be writing so that you love it, that you, you can't wait to write another book in that realm. Because think of all the authors in your genre or the ones that you like to read. Why do you like to read their books? Do you like to read them when they have a storyline that carries through? Do you like to read them because they have a world that you've already been in? More than likely, the answer is yes. I mean, look at the Harry Potter books, for crying out loud. I remember when they were first coming out, they were like the best thing ever. I remember I was pregnant with my youngest and I was waiting for the next one to come out. Oh my God, it was like the greatest thing. I was just enamored. I couldn't wait. And so, you know, when you're pregnant, you're like, oh, I don't feel like doing anything else. So that's what I did. I read. I read Harry Potter all the time. It was like the best thing ever. But books are like that. You want to be able to escape into them and you want to sit with the characters for a while. And since TV shows are not recording very, very much at the moment, at least not many of them, uh, books are going to become even more relevant. And so having those characters that they can love and can dive into right now, it's so important. So if you haven't been writing a series just yet, or if you haven't thought about rapid releasing in terms of a series, think about it in, in at least the regard of don't recreate the wheel. The whole point of a series is to make it easier for you to write as quickly as possible. It doesn't mean you have to have a series that sucks. It doesn't have mean that you have to have a cookie cutter series. That's certainly something that my readers would never expect from me. It just means that now you, ha you have an understanding of that world and you're able to go and run with it as quickly as possible. I'll tell you, even Diana Hawthorne, she has a way of filtering herself into other books that are not even her own. <laughs> and so I know with her, she's very persistent and I know her voice and I know the characters that are along with her very well. And I know that if I go right into the, the second book or the third book or the fourth book or the 19th book, it's going to be easier to slip into her world because she is just so persistent. And I have in my mind such a concrete idea of what her world is capable of handling. All right, guys. Well, hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully you were able to view this despite my really crappy internet. <laughs> I will hopefully get it sorted out. It, it does this thing. I don't even know. Once every few weeks where it's like great internet, it's fantastic otherwise. And then it just poo poos out. I don't even know. And I think my uh, internet guy was calling me when I was on here. So hopefully he'll be able to help us get it fixed. But until next week, I hope you have a, an awesome time. Be sure to check out the rest of the podcast episode. It went live today. And yeah, we will talk to you again. Same time, same place next week. Bye, guys. Have a great week. Get some writing done. Happy Writer Wednesday. <laughs>